I'd like to discuss a little concept in cosmology called uh, isotropy and homogeneity. Um, isotropy is the idea that the universe looks similar in all directions and homogene homogeneity is the idea that the universe has the same properties everywhere. My particular interest my is the property of density. Does this does the universe have the same density everywhere? And and to try to make that distinction a little bit more clear, um, let's say we were looking out into the universe from this central point, and looking out, say this was 7 billion light years, and this, this is a slightly different scale. I didn't find pictures of the same scale. 7 billion light years. Um, in the diagram on the left, you'll notice that as you get towards the edge, the uh, dots become just a little bit thicker. Whereas if you look at the diagram on the right, you'll see the dots stay at about the same density all the way to the edge. Now, let me try to give you try to give you the standard model claim and simple terms as possible. It's that isotropy everywhere implies homogeneity. So in in this example in particular, um, to say that I lived here and saw a symmetrical distribution of galaxies and would imply okay and say say this wasn't homogeneous like assume the opposite for a moment um, then it would imply that this guy would not see a homogeneous distribution of galaxies. He would not... Okay, so it would appear isotropic from that point, but it would not appear isotropic from that point. And that's the argument. But if it was homogeneous, then if... then this guy would see it as isotropic, and another guy over here would also see it as isotropic. Now that is... Essentially, that is the argument used to say that this model, to to say that this model is incorrect and this model is is correct. So they say, therefore, the non-homogeneous model on the left is impossible. Now, it's considered. I think it's considered so obvious that uh, most uh, texts don't really try to present the argument. It might be considered superfluous because it's so obvious. But I mean, I did find a the actual case being made in the first three minutes by Steven Weinberg. And they had, I drew a, I kind of redrew the figure because I didn't, I didn't scan it, but um, in figure two, it's in chapter two of Weinberg's first three minutes, it says isotropy and homogeneity. homogeneity. If the universe is isotropic about both galaxy one and galaxy two, then it is homogeneous. And that's the claim that I disagree with. I don't think that's true. Um, in order to show that the conditions, but let's look at his reasoning. In order to show that the conditions at two arbitrary points, A, here's A, and B, are the same, um, draw a circle through A around galaxy one. OK, so that's the circle through A around galaxy one and another circle through B at galaxy 2. And the isotropy around galaxy 1 requires the conditions are the same at point A and point C, whereas isotropy at galaxy 2 requires that the conditions are the same at B and C. So since A is equal to C and B is equal to C, then A is equal to B. And it also says any point in the universe can be carried to any other point by a series of rotations around fixed centers so that if the universe appears isotropic around every point, it is necessarily also homogeneous. Now, it is my feeling that Weinberg does not account for the relativity of simultaneity 
And though he mentions rotations, I think he is specifically meaning uh, circular rotations, the commonly known um, trigonometric rotations. What he's not taking into account of is hyperbolic rotation. In essence, in order to make this argument, Weinberg completely rejects the special theory of relativity. So I'll add that to my list right here. Because what Weinberg is assuming is that A and C, these two events um, from galaxy 1, are simultaneous events that the density of the galaxy, the density of the universe over here and the density of the universe over here should be the same. What he's doing is he's assuming that those events from the perspective of galaxy 1 are simultaneous, they will also be simultaneous from the perspective of galaxy 2, which is not, which shouldn't be accurate if you take into account that those two galaxies are moving apart. In fact, if we put space on one axis and time on another axis, and we consider those two galaxies, um, let's say this is the speed of light, roughly, and we look at the viewpoint of a galaxy that's moving only forward in time, that would be the stationary galaxy, and another galaxy that's moving off to the right at a significant portion of the speed of light, then this guy will see this event, A, and this event, B, as simultaneously. Um, but if we look at this guy, he is going to see, he also needs to be at the center of this uh, circle or of this of this light cone and he will see a different event simultaneous with B he will see this event simultaneous with B I don't think I tilted that enough let's uh, what we want is that this line and let's see maybe this line and this line are the same length so so to be at the center of the light cone, um, that's the requirement that those t those two line segments be the same length. But the time has changed, so this. So what I would want to do to simulate this properly is to imagine um, a a cone or a, uh, a uh, basically a cone coming from that guy and seeing what it how it intersects with a cone coming from this guy I should have drawn those in different colors but let's and seeing and we should imagine what the shape of that uh, distribution of galaxies looks like from this guy's perspective, but we should also imagine what this distribution of galaxies looks like from this guy's perspective. Now I've constructed my own diagram and I've made a little bit of a modification on this, namely that the radius of these two circles has been increased. So so one of the, the circle around galaxy 2 actually reaches galaxy 1 and the circle around galaxy 1 actually reaches galaxy 2. And it looks like this. So uh, galaxy 1 is right here, and galaxy 2 is right. It's one of these, so I'm not sure which. But um, Now this circle, the symmetrical circle, was constructed essentially using that the uh, velocity is equal to the hyperbolic tangent of 1. That is about 76% of the speed of light. So this galaxy here is also going 76% of the speed of light away from this point here. The second circle, the one that looks kind of oblique like an ellipse, with definitely a higher density over here than it has over here, was constructed in the same way but going 76% of the speed of light from this uh, guy. So from his perspective, this thing is going to look like a perfect circle, and this part is going to look like an ellipse. So here's my argument in a nutshell, and show, as shown in this uh, animation, 
The cosmological principle is essentially false. A simple application of Hubble's law, that is that, um, that, the, that the distance of objects is proportional to the velocity of the objects, um, along with some a little bit of special relativity, shows that isotropy is possible without spatial homogeneity. That is, um, the universe would look the same uh, in all directions from every point in the universe, but it is not spatially homog hom homogeneous because out here at the edges you would have um, you would have a higher density as you get as the objects get closer and closer to the speed of light they bunch up. Um, that is not to say that you don't have some kind of homogeneity. You would actually have homogeneity within what I would call rapidity space. Um, if you just take the rapidities of all of the objects instead of the velocities, you would have homogeneity. And rapidity goes from negative infinity to infinity instead of from, from minus the speed of light to positive speed of light. So if you put this in rapidity space, which is in fact how I made the animation in the first place, was starting with the rapidity space and then mapping it to velocity space, um, you would have uh, rapidity space homogeneity, but not spatial homogeneity. And I thank you for listening, and please leave your comments below the video.